Well, today we are ending our week of magic, and what a better way to do so than with someone who has been doing magic for over four decades, has performed on five continents, and holds several positions in the magic world. Joining us today is Dr. John Redmond. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, you know what? Let's start off by just tooting your own horn a little bit. We said you're holding uh, several important positions. Uh, well, I'm the uh, currently, it's my second term as president of the Society of American Magicians, the local Tucson Assembly. Uh, I know you guys have been calling it Sam all week. It's actually Society of American Magicians, John Alexander, Assembly Number One Thirty Six. So we just Sam is good. <laughs> we like yeah. Sam. Yeah, Sam we is like Sam. Uh, I'm, uh, this is my second term. Uh, so yeah, I, I think you guys posted it. I've been doing magic for over four decades. Yeah. So during that time, I've had, I've experienced a lot of different aspects of magic. And so now, what kind of got you interested in magic, and maybe who are some of your influences? Uh, I became interested in magic when I was about 10 years old. I was going to the library in the, this little town we lived in called Albany, Oregon. And I was reading magic books, and I would check them out. Finally, the librarian says, would you like to meet a real magician? We have some that meet here every Wednesday night. And I said, sure. Well, she introduces me to this one magician. His name was Jerry Andrews. Probably doesn't mean anything to you, but in the magic world, it would be kind of like finding out that Eric Clapton hung out at your local library. Uh, oh, my God. Just, yeah. And so that's how I got into magic. And uh, I've, uh, it's, it's been a wild ride, and I, I, it's, it's one thing in my life that I guess you could just say is uh, the, the anchor that holds, holds me in place. Do you know what I really love is, is we've asked this question of a couple of the magicians that have come on, and a lot of them is, have said some point in their life they've either met another magician or they, they saw something, you know, like a kit or something. So I think that shows that can maybe open up a door to, to people, and that could be sure. their moment, you know what sure. I mean? So, you know, I went to Stars of Magic, and I knew right then I wanted to do this for the rest of my life. Oh, you yeah. just never know. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think that's amazing because that's kind of like a trend. I'm, I'm hearing that they say, mm -hmm. you know, when I was young, I just knew I loved it. So we have also been asking all the magicians, you know, they have different kinds, either comedy or, you know, whatever right. it is. What is your kind of specialty? My genre of magic yeah. that I would, a specialty would be um, what's called parlor or cabaret. Okay. Ranging from anywhere from 25 to up to about 150. Uh, the, the type of magic I do is a little bit more interactive with the audience versus just come and watch. I like to involve audience members. I play. I like to really play off of their energy. So that is is my genre, my my niche. Well, I love that. Will you show us kind sure, of? Yeah, sure, sure. I mean. uh, you were talking about earlier influences, and uh, I asked this this world famous magician uh, in Albany. I said, "How is it that you can do magic?" And it looks like real magic. And he was what we call a magician's magician. He could fool other magicians and fool them badly. And this is what he said to me. He said, "Magic, for it to be magic, has to defy." the laws of the universe and nature. Wow. Otherwise, it's just a puzzle or a trick. A puzzle meaning it just causes your audience to try and figure out what you did. A trick meaning they think you got them to look over here while you did something sneaky here. Mm -hmm. So I thought I'd bring something, and we'll see what we can do here okay. to create a little magic. Heather, would you do me a favor? Now, you guys brought your own quarter. We didn't yes. set anything up prior to this. Oh, this came out of Ken Carr's pocket. Ken Carr's pocket. <laughs> would you do me a favor? Would you initial that for me, please? Of course. I didn't even know you could write on. With a permanent marker, I forgot to tell you, and you're dressed up, this is a permanent marker. Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad Operative, I didn't yeah. accidentally write on myself there. A pack of 52 cards, okay. solid. They have density, they have weight, just like a solid silver quarter. Now, I've made a cut in the, can you see it? Yes, there's a cut in the back. Here, I want you to watch closely. If I just begin to work that quarter a little bit, just like that, okay. it penetrates. Through the deck. Okay, so it went right now. Yeah, but I can see the look on your face already. Are there cards in there? Well, now you know what the puzzle is, right? Yeah. yeah. Your mind started seeing it, going, "Well, I can figure that out." There might not be anything in the deck. Now, there's something in the deck okay. if you listen real yes. close. Or it's a trick. Maybe he made me look over here when he did something. But I think you'll have to agree it defies the laws, the laws of the yes. universe, to put silver. <gasps> through solid steel. What? Oh my gosh, there's not cards in no, there. Go ahead, go ahead. That's a pound and a half of solid oh steel. Oh my goodness, look at this. How in the world? This is, look it's here. Solid. Give me TV that. Solid. Give me this. Put it through. Come on now. <laughs> that is amazing. No. Nope. That's, and I hope my mic is picking that up. Case. There's no little elves in there with welding right. tools. I'm, I'm ex there is literally only just, nope, a just the slits on, this on side either side. And a slit on this side. Nothing funny in the middle, guys. Nothing wow. funny in the middle. Wow, look at that. That wow. was crazy. That's cool. And it's and, and it's the, still the same quarter with your uh, initials. Yeah, still the same. But you see awesome. how your mind goes into that. Well, it's a puzzle. I, yeah. If he, did he do this? 
but once you come to terms with the fact that it defies reality or the well, laws of the universe. And John, it, all the you know times we've been talking about the Stars of Magic right. show, we've been talking a lot about it being uh, a family-friendly yes. show, but you kind of want to define that a little bit more for sure. us. Sure. I think sometimes with magic shows, what happens if you say family-friendly yeah. oriented, what happens is adults sometimes can think that it's a ki just a kid's show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And by all means, kids you know from 8 to 80 to 2 to 102 can enjoy, but it's not just that. What family-oriented means to a magician is we don't have blue material. There's no lewd, crude, uh, nudity, that type of thing. So it's something that you can bring uh, your kids to, something you can bring your significant, significant other to, your grandmother to. It has something for everybody. Yeah. So it just means that there's nothing there that's going to embarrass you in front of your family members for bringing them to, to the magic show. So I wanted to make sure we got that. No, out. definitely. Oh, yeah. So this is obviously kid friendly, but this is for everybody. It's and for everybody. I know that we've been enjoying it so much <laughs> the entire week. And again, you know, it's, it's not just one or two musicians, uh, magicians. <laughs> it's illusionists, magicians, sure. comedy magic. Sure. It's, I mean, what, what can viewers... She almost it's cried not, yesterday I during oh, George's. I, was, I just loved it. So. Here's, here's what I think viewers or, or audience members can expect if they come to Stars. It's kind of like, you mentioned musician. It's kind of like seeing your, your favorite musician on television or a magician yeah. on television and going to see them in concert. Yeah. Here you can see the magic. Absolutely. But at Stars, you'll not only see it, but you'll experience the ambiance of the big show. Be impressed. That, well put, John. John, thank you so much. So, for thank you for having morning. me. And again, the Stars of Magic show will take place August 29th at 7 p.m. at the Temple of Music and Art. Tickets are $15 for adults and $10 for children. To learn more, you can visit starsofmagicshow.com.